Hi, my name is uh, Maarten Hendriksen, and I will tell you something today about the evaluation of a new virtual reality-based hearing device fine-tuning procedure, which is part of a research project that I'm doing at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam, together with my colleagues uh, Gert-Jan Dingemanse and André Goedegebeuren. As you all know, um, the settings of hearing aids and cochlear implants need to be adjusted to each individual. And after a first fit, some fine tuning is needed to uh, adjust the setti settings according to the individual hearing preferences and also according to the situations in which the devices are needed. Currently, this fine tuning is done in a quiet uh, room in the clinic, and patients often mention, well, in here it sounds fine, but when I go outside, it sounds completely different. So they then have to go home to try out the settings in different situations. And if they are not satisfied, they have to return to the clinic for further adjustments. This is of course not a very efficient process and it would be much better if they could already try out uh, their settings in different situations in the clinic together with the audiologist so that adjustments could already be made for different situations and then hopefully they are more satisfied when they go home and they don't need to return as often for further adjustments. And this is the goal of the project, to offer uh, different listening situations during the fine-tuning by simulating them uh, with virtual reality. So in order to do this, we de designed different uh, virtual listening situations. The, ver the first environment that we uh, uh, designed is the living room, which you can see in the picture here. So here we can offer different listening situations, which is a conversation between two persons in quiet or noise. You can see the woman sitting over here, uh, and there's another person sitting on the right on the sofa. You can also uh, watch TV, listen to music, and during the conversation, someone can call from the kitchen or the doorbell can ring to check if uh, people can still hear this. Also, we can play some sounds such as the vacuum cleaner or kitchen noises to see if these sounds are not too annoying for people. Then we also have a restaurant situation where you can play conversation with a child in noise and also a multi-person conversation with the two people who are also sitting on the table on, at the table here um, in a bit more noise. And then finally we have a street situation which is of course about traffic participation to see if uh, people can still hear the approaching traffic and from which direction it comes. And also we can check here if loud noises are not too loud, such as the uh, siren from an ambulance or the uh, train that is crossing at the real vehicles. These situations are played back on a loudspeaker ring with 12 loudspeakers and a virtual reality headset. So for the uh, VR fine-tuning process, we presented these listening situations one by one, and we had specific questions for each situation regarding the intelligibility, pitch, naturalness, loudness, and annoyance of the sound. Based on the answers of the participant, the audiologist could then adjust uh, some settings in the hearing devices, and then we replay the listening situations to see if it had, had improved or not. And this was then repeated as often as necessary. To evaluate this new fine-tuning procedure, um, we included both hearing aid users and cochlear implant users. Uh, they first did the standard clinical fitting procedure, which resulted in a clinical fit. And sometimes this clinical fit was a, also a bit different than the setting that they were currently used to. Then they did the VR fine-tuning procedure, which resulted in a VR fit. And then for two weeks, they tried first 
uh, one of the fields and then the other one, the uh, order was double blinded. And in between, when they changed to the other fit, they did the uh, speed, spatial, and quality of hearing scale. And after the second two weeks, again. And then they also did a speech and noise test to measure the 50% uh, speech reception threshold, both of the fits. And we did paired comparisons between the fits in the virtual environments to see if they had a preference for one or the other. And finally, they decided which one they wanted to keep. Then I'll show some preliminary results of the cochlear implant users. We have the data here of uh, 10 participants. So first of all, all participants were very positive about the fine tuning in VR. They said it was really good that they could try out uh, their settings in different situations. And they would all recommend uh, other people to also do this. In the bottom left here, we can see the difference in the uh, maximum stimulation levels for the cochlear implant electrodes between the clinical fits and the virtual reality fit. And we see here the uh, black line is the average over the participants that the virtual reality fit resulted on average in higher stimulation levels, which would mean like a louder sound for the people. And the colored lines are the individual uh, participants. In the plot on the right, we can see the uh, results for each one of the participants. Again, the colored lines are the uh, participants. So we see uh, whether the final choice was for the VR fit or the clinical fit, whether they had a preference for one or the other in the pair comparisons, whether their speech reception threshold was different, and whether the SSQ scores were different, were different. So we can see here that for three of the uh, 10 participants, the VR fit was clearly better. So they had a clear preference for the VR fit and also the speech reception threshold with the VR fit was significantly better. Um, for the rest, there are no significant changes, although two participants preferred the clinical fit, but this did not correspond to a difference in speech perception threshold or SSQ scores. So the data collection is still ongoing, especially for the hearing aid group. We're currently measuring more uh, participants. The results so far look promising, but more research is needed to find out whether the VR fine tuning is worth the time and the effort and for whom. And for more information, you can have a look at our uh, conference papers that were accepted for the Forum Acousticum. I expect they will be online soon. And with that, I'm at the end of my presentation and I can answer questions now if there are any.